morning, ladies. We're so glad that you are joining us this Saturday morning. I pray that you will be blessed by all the great things that we have in store for you. I just wanted to take just a quick second to welcome you and to read some scripture. Isaiah 41, uh, verses 9 and 10 in the message says this. Don't panic. I need that this morning. Don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady, keep a firm grip on you. That is such a great promise. Um, I am so thankful that God keeps a firm grip on me and he keeps a firm grip on you. And we are so happy to be able to share scripture and word and encouragement with you. And so welcome and join us as we worship together. Welcome to the Digital Women's Camp. We're so excited to lead you in praise and worship today. So the words will be on the screen and you can join along with us. This song is called Offering. So the next song we're going to sing is Magnify Jesus, and this is in English and Spanish, so the words will be up on the screen for you. Jesus. 
God who called still calls. Those who call on the Lord are called by the Lord, called to be his people. Those who call on the Lord are called by the Lord and called to serve his people. That is who we are. That is who we must be. Those called by the Lord, called to serve, called to serve his people. Abraham was called, called by God, called to follow God to a new land called to father a family, called to be a blessing, called to be blessed, called to serve, called to bless. This is called, called by God, called to follow God back to an old land, called to face Pharaoh, called to face up to who he was, called to confront his helplessness, called to count on his helpers, called to deliver, and called to serve. Joshua was called, called by God, called to follow God into a new land, called to be strong, called to be courageous, called to face fearsome foes, called to follow, called to lead. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9 Go lead, go serve, go into battle, go reign, go see the goodness of the Lord, and the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. Go learn, go teach, go save, go serve. We are called to go, to go and make disciples. And the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. We go in the name of the Lord to serve, to live a new life, to be disciples, to evangelize and encourage. The Lord has called us to preach the gospel to them Acts 16, 10. And the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. So we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of his calling, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we go, called by God, called to be, called to serve, and the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. I'm standing at your door. My heart is calling yours. Come fall into my arms. Your from it all 
been running for too long. I'm here to bring you home. I'm reaching out. I'll chase you down. I dare you to believe how much I love you now. Don't be afraid. I am your strength. We'll be walking on the water, dancing on the waves. Look up and lift your eyes. The future's open wide. I have great plans for you. Your past is dead and gone. Your healing has begun. I'm making all things new. I'm reaching out. I'll chase you down. I dare you to believe how much I love you now. Don't be afraid. I am your strength. We'll be walking on the water, dancing on the waves. I said to place so you would remember my name I made it all for you you are my masterpiece you are the reason I sing this is my song for you I said every song to place so you would remember my name I made it all for you you are my masterpiece you are the reason I sing this is my song for you I'm reaching now chase you down I dare you to believe how much I love you now don't be afraid know that I am your strength we'll be walking on the water dancing on the waves we'll be walking on the water dancing on the waves good morning i'm going to be reading today from isaiah 43 verses 14 to 21 from the new international version this is isaiah 43 verses 14 to 21. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and re reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffled out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making it away in the desert a stream and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me. 
the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland, to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, and they may proclaim my praise. Good morning. Um, this is such a privilege to be with you this weekend and sharing God's word. Um, I know you've been on a journey to explore, reflect, and pray about being strong and courageous. You studied different um, scripture passage about individual that experience God's faithfulness, trusting and believing in his promises. It is a powerful element in our spiritual life to continually be reminded of who God is from other witnesses who have gone before us through their life's encounter with God, which in turn have the power to strengthen and renew our faith in him. Today, we are going to look at what it looks like to move forward with God when we are not sure what the future holds. In Ecclesiastes 3, 4, King Solomon tells us that there is a time for everything under heaven. There will be times of ups and downs. In his word, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. The big question is, how do we keep moving forward when things are difficult? How do we continue to trust during uncertain time when the future is so uncertain? Often when I feel overwhelmed and anxious about what the future holds because of the heavy burdens of today, the scripture passage reminds me of specific characteristics of the God that we serve. It reminds me that not only do we serve a God that gives us strength and courage in our past and present moment in life, but a God who goes before us preparing the future. It is crucial during our current circumstances that bring concerns and fear that we hold on with confidence to all that we know about God. Here are some aspects of God from Isaiah 43. Um, really, a lot of it start in verse 1, but today we're going to look at verse 14, 21. That lifts me and gives me hope in the future that I cannot fathom, but knows that God is already preparing. I pray these characteristics of God will also encourage you and gives you hope as you think of where do we go from here? And how do we move forward to an unknown tomorrow? So the first couple of characteristics that um, I, would, I want you to remember is that God is our creator, our redeemer, and he is our holy king. In the New Living Translation version, this part of scripture is titled, The Lord's Promise of Victory which I think is so appropriate when facing a time in which every day may feel like a battle that we are trying to win and survive. The amount of stress this COVID-19 season brings in our work, family, and spiritual life sometimes feel unbearable. And knowing that we serve a God that is a God of victory should give us hope in our heart. To have a better understanding of this passage and see how it relates to us, let us do a quick overview of it. When Isaiah spoke these words to um, the people, they have lost everything. The Israelites have been in exile for about 70 years in Babylon. They lost the family, the city has been devastated, the temple destroyed, the religion, culture, way of life taken away from them. Seventy years, that is a long time. The people were in despair. They, are at a, they were at a crossroad in their faith and life journey. It is during that time that Isaiah received this message of hope from God to the Israelites reminding them of who he is 
In verse 14, 17, God's words to the people is that he is going to deliver them from the Babylonians. And if they have any doubt on how he will liberate them from this powerful nation, God's call on them to remember the exile from victory from Egypt and how the Redeemer provides for them throughout their journey in the wilderness. God we affirm his title to the Israelites nation in case they forget. He is their king, the Holy One. He is their creator, redeemer, the one who freed them from the Egyptians, the one who walks and cares for them to out their exodus journey from Egypt. We have been in this stay at home order for two months. Now though, although it's opening up a little bit, a way of life is disrupted. Some of you maybe lost your job, or maybe you're not sure what's gonna happen. Lost family members, or someone you know. Some of us are worried about the economy and how it's going, you know, and all that's happening, and the list can go on and on. And we question, where is God in all of this? And how is it going to get us out of this mess we are in right now? God's word to the Israelites is the same for us today because we know that he is constant. He never changes. So if you have doubt in your hearts about how to move forward in your faith during this time, so if you have any doubt at all, I invite you in this season of life to remember the God that we serve because the source of our capacity to trust him West in what we know and believe about his character. So I call on you today to remember the double ownership God has over us. He not only created us, but he redeems us from our sins. He furthermore, the Lord did not merely redeem us and let us go, but he continually provides and cares for his people. Maybe you wonder why, why is God so interested in us. In verse 4 of this chapter, chapter 43 of Isaiah, God said, because you are precious and honored in my sight. And he said he loves us. So God is telling you today, his people, his precious one, do not fear when you are going through the fire or pass through the water because he who created you, redeemed you, and calls you by name will be with you. We do not serve a distant and indifferent God, but a God who stayed near to us at every step of this life journey. I know this is not always clear and easy to feel God's presence with us during a non time or even understand how he is going to work amid all of what is happening in our life and in the world today. So when doubt and fear seize you while you are facing hardship, lift up your eyes to the heaven and remember that the God you serve is faithful and he is not going to abandon you. Instead, he is going to stay by your side within the storm. God reassures the Israelites nation of this fact in verse 18, 21, which is also a message for us. So the second thing that we need to remember about the God that we serve is that he is faithful in keeping his promises to care for our future. In verse 18, 21, it, is, it, it does require us to take a moment to ponder in God's word and questions to the Israelites. Listen to that. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it sprang up. Do you not perceive it? Now I am making a new way in the desert, a streams in the wasteland. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, 
Did not God, in the previous verses, reminded the Israelites how he delivers them from the past? And now he is asking them to forget the former things. If you notice this contrast from these verses, that is an excellent point to consider. Throughout scripture, God often asks the Israelites' nation to remember what he has done for them. In fact, God put in place many memorial festivals to help them remember his goodness toward them so they can continue to build and strengthen their faith in him and pass it on from generation to generation. However, God does not want them to dwell so much in the past that they cannot see what he is doing now or what he is going to do. God does not want his people to get stuck in the past and not be able to move forward. I have been struggling um, to reconcile these two concepts of remembering. And I think this week God gave me a little clarity and example of how it looks. My dad has been in the hospital for two weeks with the virus. And this week the doctor called me and let me know that his condition takes a turn for the worst. After I talked to the doctor on the phone, I had the feeling, I have that feeling of deja vu in my heart. And it is because it reminds me of a similar experience that I have with my late husband. I remember how hard I prayed for healing, for, um, and the answer did not come how I expected it. And now I'm afraid to start praying again. I'm afraid to hope again. I don't have words. I'm afraid if I say something, it's going to go wrong. So as I lay in my bed dwelling in the past experience, this verse come back to me. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it sprang up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a new way in the wilderness. I do not know yet what the new thing God is doing is. And truthfully, I cannot perceive it or imagine it, what this new thing is going to look like. But what I did realize that night is that my inability to pray at the moment is based on the past experience. What is holding me back in trusting and believing in God is me clinging to the past. As believers, we need to depend on the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and discernment to know when to hold on to memories and when to let them go. Because the purpose of remembering God's faithfulness and goodness from history is so that our faith and trust in him can go stronger and deeper. So in verse 18, 19 of this chapter, God urges the people to forget the former things and not dwell in the past. Instead, they need to focus on the new thing that he is going to do. The Israelites were probably pondering on all that God has done in the past. For example, the flags from Egypt opening a path in the sea, God walking behind and before them in the wilderness, pillar of cloud in front of them during the day and fire at night. They are probably reminiscing about all the other way God answered their prayers when they cried out to him again and again, and he always delivered them. Can God do anything more beautiful and powerful than this? Can he be any stronger than he has already been done in the past? Well, this is the problem with our limited human view. We can get stuck in previous miracles God has done or get lost in what is happening now, which can make it very hard for us to see beyond our past or present circumstances. Hard to imagine a brighter future when we are facing difficult times. New things can be scary, especially, ladies, 
when we do not get to decide what it's going to be, when we do not have control over it, and they did not invite us to be part of the planning. Yet, this is what God is asking the Israelites and us to do. He's asking us to refocus, to refocus their mind in who he is, the Holy One, the Redeemer, the Creator, the King, and the Provider. Yes, God did great things in the past. Now it is time to imagine perceiving greater things he is doing and is going to do in the future. And the new stuff God is doing is happening now in the desert. It is happening now when the time is hard. The path for the future began a means of present circumstances, not after we come out of it. We need to learn to develop, with the help of the Holy Spirit, the ability to see God at work, to the discomfort of the moment, so we can trust and have faith in God for the future. If it is getting harder and harder for you to see the way God is working, if it is harder, it's stressful to even see a path in the wilderness. I want you to hear that. The way God is making in the wilderness, which can be picture of our present circumstances, take a look at verse 20. God said, I provide water in the desert for the animals and make a stream in the wasteland. How much more will I care for my chosen one? The animals in the wilderness praise God for his provision for them in the desert. We, God's children, are to proclaim his goodness to others and praise his holy name for all God has done. He's doing right now and all that he is going to do in the future. Where are you in your faith? How are you feeling today? Can you look at your present circumstances to the lens of God's character. The same way God reminds the Israelites that he will care for them as he cared for the animals in the desert by providing refreshment for them, Jesus also tells and we affirm to us in Matthew 6, 26, 27, look at the birds in the air, of the air. They do not sow or weep or weep or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than them? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? As we conclude our time today, think about your study of Joshua. Do you remember God's words to Joshua as he take on the responsibility to lead the Israelites to the promised land, to lead them into the unknown future that awaits them? God's words to Joshua was, be strong and courageous. But it didn't just stop there. Joshua can only be strong and courageous because God said, I will be with you wherever you go. Now listen to the summary version of God's word to the Israelites from Isaiah 43, or chapter that we are working on today. But look at verse 1 and 5. As he prepared to deliver them from the Babylonian, he said, When you pass through the waters and fires, do not be afraid, for I am with you. The thing is, whatever our situation is, our strength and courage that we have, it's because God is with us. Yes, time might be challenging right now and the future even scarier. But remember who your God is and his promises to be with you always and trust him. And do not forget to praise, worship, and honor him to whatever comes next. So lift up your head. Remember, God is not only your creator. He is your redeemer. He does not only redeem you. He continues to take care of you. So whatever your circumstance is today, 
God is in with you. So this is God's word for you today. And I hope as you continue your journey in life, that you remember those aspects of God's character and that you will, he'll go with before you. He is with you always and always. May God bless you. So in for our closure today, we are going to sing the song of comfort. I am in his hand. I am in his hand. Whatever the future holds, I am in his hand. Today I cannot see what all been planned for me. But his way, his best, I'm in his hand. May these words be will in your heart as your strength and encouragement to keep you moving forward with God during this time. I'm in his hands. I'm in his hands. Whatever the future holds. I'm in his hands The days I cannot see Have all been planned for me His way is best You see I'm in his hands I pray that you've been blessed watching, um, participating, listening, hearing everything um, with the virtual women's camp. Um, I will be closing us in prayer, so would you just please pray with me? Dear God, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to meet during this time. Your words tell us to be strong and courageous and do not be terrified and do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Lord, Please give us the strength when we are weak and the courage when we feel afraid. Um, and sometimes we don't know what the future is going to hold. But Father, we just pray that through your strength and courage, Father, that we will be able to walk through whatever we are going through, Father. And I just pray, Father, um, to give us peace during this time of unknowing, Lord. Um, and I just pray that you would just bring people to surround us, to walk alongside us during um, these times. And I just thank you for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. The grand earth was quaked before 
moved by the sound of his voice. The seas that are shaken and storm can be calmed and broken from my regard. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well. Far be it for me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea And through it all, through it
Through it all, through it all, it is well.